Malik, who is uh, the healthcare guru, will uh, be here in minutes. But um, uh, Marco is uh, has partnered with us from Enjoy uh, Enterprises. And that's Marco in the striped sweater, and guess he is coming this way. And uh, Mark, I was just introducing you. Oh, okay. uh, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, what you do and, and what you're doing out there? Sure. Um, to kind of prime everyone. Sure. And Hi. How you doing? Uh, again, I'm Marco Nobles of Enjoy Enterprises, and among the number of things that we do, which includes events, event promotion, event production, marketing, uh, public relations, we also own and operate an internet radio station that's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is called RhythmAndSoulRadio.com, and we are out there broadcasting right now one of our shows, Musical Pathways, is on every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 2 until 5 p.m., and the two young ladies who just walked in are two of the co-hosts of that show, Mama Soul and Lady Scorpio, Hello. who uh, you saw as you kind of walked in. They've been uh, sitting up and now broadcasting, and DJ Black Icon 1 is actually outside continuing the broadcast so that um, we can continue to let everybody know who is listening to us, not only in Harlem and New York City, but in 55 countries around the world where people are listening to us, what's going on and what we're doing. Um, so we're an urban eclectic internet radio station uh, promoting artists uh, that need to be heard, independent artists as well as some of the more commercial artists, and promoting some of the important issues going on in our community. So it's kind of edutainment, if you will. So certainly entertaining, but also being able to share information. Uh, certainly like this, and we do events such as Music is Life that we've partnered with uh, Emblem Health on, uh, and more events that we'll be partnering on with Harlem World Magazine as we continue to move forward. So hopefully you all will enjoy and you all will listen and you will tell others to listen and you'll know about more of the things that we have going on. Great. All right. Thank you, Marco. And, you know, part of the idea we had, which was to invite artists to, um, you know, from all the categories of the arts, performers, dancers, actors, musicians, designers, some of you are here and some of you uh, will be listening that aren't here. Uh, we are taping the show so you'll be able to look at it on our website which is harlemworldmag.com and Harlem World Magazine is, uh, we're celebrating our 10th year this year and we are a Harlem content company uh, all throughout the social networks but our big uh, behemoth is harlemworldmag.com so please check us out. And um, uh, do ask any questions that you have regarding this issue of healthcare. And some of you are more specialists in the field. Some of you are like myself, an uh, artist who owns their own business and uh, does a few other things, uh, wear many hats. Um, this event is sponsored by our dear friends at Emblem Healthcare. And as I mentioned before, uh, one of their leads, uh, healthcare professionals will be in to talk to us. And I just wanted to also uh, give some props to uh, Nelson Mandela, who passed uh, yesterday uh, at 95. Um, and, you know, I guess that's what good health care does, right? You live a long, <laughs> healthy life. Um, since most of us are artists, all of us are artists, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we do as artists. Uh, artists are the working poor making on average $21,000 a year. Artists contribute $40 billion a year to the U.S. economy. Uh, 22.3 million uh, artists create cultural tourism in the United States each year. 22 million. Uh, artists are three times more likely to be elected to class office in their schools. <laughs> since you know, since I'm not making this up, you can go to the National Endowment for the Arts website at NEA.org. Um, artists are four times more likely to participate in a math or science fair. 
you know, we just make music, we just dance, you know, <laughs> just do a collage, just write. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, artists are four times more likely to win an award for school attendance. Uh, improved academic performance, students who participate in the arts both in school and after school demonstrate improved academic performance and lower dropout rates. Last but not least, students with four years of high school arts and music classes have higher SAT scores than students with one half year or less. Arts does not help, right? In one's life, kids, adults, or whatever it may be. Uh, so I just want to, and this is a, a, a snippet of some of the statistics on the NEA side. Um, I always love these statistics because I'm always talking to my artist friends about, uh, and I think I, I was speaking to, what was your, your name? Kawano. Kawano, uh, who's an actress who has a member, who's a member of the union. And with the union, there are some health benefits, right? So as a visual artist, zip, zero. And we probably have maybe, I'm sure there's more actors and actresses in the United States than there are visual artists. But the last I saw, there were one million artists, visual artists in America. No union, no health care. Is there a, a writer's union? The, the, there is a right, right. the writers the writers guild the WGA and the dramatist guild which are right. any musicians I know have uh, one oh I think it's eight oh four there's the ASCAP for, for That's soul right. writers That's also right. ASCAP so I'm only instigating about visual arts you know the sculptors the painters photographers I know and you've probably heard this before but uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, what's not happening and, and what is happening. Um, so all that said, uh, we've invited uh, Diane, Diane Richards, Richards uh, who will do a reading from one of her books. That's all I'll say. Thank you. I'm getting tired of me talking to you. Do I have to go up here? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Um, all right, so I'm just going to read very shortly a few pages from a work in progress called The Colored, C-U-L-L-U-D, Co-op. And um, it is a work, it's about a co-op in Harlem. It's very, very current about what's happening or has already happened in Harlem around affordability of housing. And so you're from the Harlem Writers Guild. I'm from the Harlem Writers Guild, and uh, I have some works published, and I, I have uh, one of my books was uh, turned into a play last year uh, by the New Federal Theater, uh, starring Lynette McGee, and so is Red Gravy Stories. And um, but this, let me just read this, and. Um, I'm very excited about it because I also, just a little bit of background, how it was inspired, is I actually was the housing chair of Community Board 10 for some years between 2003 and 2007 before Scott Stringer came in. And I really fought hard for affordable housing and I, I terrorized um, developers downtown because I worked downtown and I was able to go down and I was really mean-spirited about it. They just didn't even want to talk to Diane Richards if she was going to be there. So my imagination took off. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the second chapter of the book, and it's called Harlem. When your spirits are low, there's a place you can go. You'll never see white folks at a strictly colored affair. Cab Calloway wrote that. That's an intro. I could, and my protagonist's name is Tempe Bailey. Tempe, T-E-M-P-Y, uh, Tempe Bailey, and this is her speaking, and it's written in the first uh, person. I could never afford to live in Manhattan, never ever, if it wasn't for Harlem. The, the Bailey family was from the lynching swampland of Mississippi, 
And as soon as we got north, my grandfather, Aaron Bailey, who had killed a slave-owning white man, who had stole his property, bought, his, bought him some homeland in the Bronx in 1929. For the rest of his life, Aaron Bailey kept a watchful eye for the Mississippi Klan following him north. In the 1960s, when I was a little girl, the civil rights movement was at an all-time high, and folks was mourning the murders of John F. Kennedy, Reverend Martin Luther King, and Bobby Kennedy. Granddaddy was near the end of his life, and we all lived in a two-bedroom apartment on 116th and Lenox Avenue. Grandpa had worked himself into a stroke, just trying to keep from being put out of his home in the Bronx, so he came to live with us in Harlem. I sat next to Grandpa's sick bed, and I knew even though he was sick, he was stronger than us all. I was terrorized by the riots on 125th Street and asked him what I should do. He rose up from his bed a little, and with his old wise eyes shining with clarity, he said, Tempe baby, don't be scared. You already survived being born black. This is what you do, baby. The first chance you can get, buy you some homeland in Harlem, right where those niggas riot, where now white men still have the nerve to lay claim to, and you will be as free as you can get before they bury your black behind. Yes, he did say that, and I never forgot. Grandpa told me I wasn't no fool. So he left his hard-saved money to me. As soon as I could buy me something I could call my own, I did. And it was indeed in Harlem, like my granddaddy wanted, with a bunch of other poor black folk gathered together. He never dreamed in the 1990s that white folk would have the guts to bum rush us from lower Manhattan and from as far as Russia and try to push us out. <coughs> I didn't care much that after graduating from Manhattan Community College with a degree in English, I couldn't land me one of those white collars, sit your ass down all day and type and answer phones for the boss jobs. First of all, I wasn't young enough or pretty enough, but I learned from my mama how to clean. I still, I will wash the white off of white and folks love to see me coming. When it's all said and done, folks want to lie down on clean white sheets, walk on clean floors, eat in sparkling clean kitchens, and know there are no dust balls under the bed, behind the sofa, or lurking in the closet, ready to pounce on them. And I learned how to live with who I am and from whence I came. I grew proud that I could do the work nobody else wanted to do and earn a good living. And so I started a business, Harlem Maids. Even the stock market's falling ain't going to cause my clients like Mrs. Lynch to fire me and make her put a rag on her head and get to mopping and sweeping. She'd die first and kill her husband for ask for making her a washerwoman. After moving out from under my mama, before I brought property in Harlem, okay, I, I think I'll stop right there, okay? Thank you very much. All right, so we're tag teaming, as you see. Dan, Danny stepped out. I stepped in. We, uh, you know, what the, what's going on is there is, um, and and Kim, Kim, right, asked me earlier, what is the deadlines for the for the Affordable Care Act? Um, and so deadlines are coming up. So there are multiple events going on where things like this are happening. So our representatives from Emblem are coming from a previous event to come here to kind of share information with us. Um, but quickly by show of hands, how many people are uninsured in the room? Okay, everybody. All right, so that, that answers question. the second question, because I was going to ask who is underinsured. Um, and that, again, is everybody. Um, so that's why we wanted to, to do this and be able to have a specific forum like this. <clears throat> And as um, our rep from Emblem gets here, I know uh, both Danny and I took this very personally because we are business people, but we are also artists in a way. Um, and so it's important for us to be able to get information out, but also get information for ourselves as well. Now, I understand you also are in the insurance field as well, is that correct? Um, why don't you, know, you share briefly what you've seen in terms of how people are kind of dealing with, you know, this quote unquote Obamacare, Affordable Care Act. First of all, people are kind of confused. 
but they keep hearing that the site is down, the site is not working. But people got to understand there are two sites. The federal government has the, um, the main website, which is where everybody goes to. But in January of this year, Governor Cuomo created the New York website. So we're not with the federal website. Our website has been up and running since it started. So a lot of people are using it. <laughs> Let me interrupt you just for a second, only because our our <laughs> our specialist has okay. just arrived. Uh, Malik Abdurazak is um, is a healthcare specialist, and he is uh, the person we've been working with with Emblem. As I mentioned, a couple of different events that Harlem World and Enjoy Rhythm and Soul Radio has been doing, including Music is Life and others. And you know, thanks to Malik, we've been able to work with Emblem to kind of share information. And we were just getting to uh, Malik talking about getting it on a real personal level. One thing you'll be you'll be interested to hear is pretty much everybody in the room is uninsured, so okay. you're, you're talking to people who, who need the information. Okay. Uh, and we were just getting into what are some of the the common issues that people have in terms of trying to get more information or any information that they can get or they've heard about Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act. And with that, if, you know, I know you're probably, you've been you're running around doing this. You're going from event to event, you know, talking about and dispelling uh, myths, rumors, and most importantly, letting people know how they can, you know, get covered now since the first deadline comes up December, uh, well, they moved the deadline to December 22nd for January 1 enrollment. No worries. Okay, good. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. How are you all? Thank you all for coming. Sorry to keep you waiting. Um, my name is Malik Abdurazak. I'm a market segment manager with Emblem Health. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying that I'm a sales territory manager. I cover Manhattan, the Bronx, Westchester, and Rockland for individual sales. So, what that means is um, the people that work for me help people get Child Health Plus, uh, Medicaid coverage, uh, coverage through the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as o Obamacare or the marketplace, uh, depending on how you define it, uh, as well as Medicare. Um, so my people have a much more important job than me. They send me running around making speeches and presentations, but my people do the work. They sit down with their computers, they interview people, they ask them questions about uh, what they need in terms of coverage and ultimately hopefully help them get health care coverage through us or through somebody else. Um, I'm glad to see you all here today. Uh, one of the reasons I was late today is we have any, we, uh, we just come off an event with the UFT, the United Federation of Teachers, um, yesterday and the day before and then I have an event at uh, CHN in the Bronx today where we take our enrollment truck, we gave out toys to kids for Christmas today. So um, they send me all over the place, and sometimes I have trouble making the transition from one place to the, to the, to the next. Um, so let's, let's talk about what you, what, what you all need. Um, I'm not here to sell you health care. I'm not here to sell you uh, on Emblem Health. I'm here to explain what Emblem is. I'm here to answer you questions about health care in general or about obtaining coverage should you need that. Um, I've been working in healthcare, gee, I think almost 24 years. So I know quite a bit about the healthcare system in New York. I know about insurance. I know about the hospitals. I know about care delivery in general. Um, I don't know everything about medicine, but I know, but I, but I know a few about, uh, know a little bit about those things. Um, when, um, I had an opportunity. I met I met Marco and I met uh, Danny Tisdale uh, because we got asked last minute to sponsor an event, and we sponsored it. It was over at uh, Jenny's Jenny's Supper Club. It was a performing artist over there, and after talking to them, I said, you know, you guys reach the artistic community here in New York, and from what I know about that community, most people I know who whether they're a, whether they're a singer whether they're an actor or whether they're uh, an, an artist in some, some sort of a medium, they don't have health coverage. Uh, they're either complaining to me about how much they pay or complain to me about how long they haven't had coverage. So I said, let's hook up and figure out through what you guys do and the messages you give whether you know I can 
uh, evangelize a little bit, for lack of a better word, about healthcare, um, and see if we can educate people in the process. So I'm here to give you information more than anything. Um, anybody want to ask me any questions before I talk about the health delivery system here in New York? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I always has the insurance companies ever thought about changing their basic business model? Because right now, <clears throat> the basic business model, which has has had to change because of the Affordable Act, but it is basically, you know, it would make money off of, of, of the illnesses of people, basically. Um, so I always felt that the insurance company should have a different business model, uh, basically, underlying it. Because how do you profit off of the illnesses of, of, of people? Um, and I'm not trying to demonize the insurance companies. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, for example, the insurance companies no longer can uh, prohibit you from having insurance on pre-existing um, conditions. And that, to me, was predatory to insure somebody while they're healthy, but as soon as they get ill or the company learns of being ill, you no longer cover. So that is no longer... You can't do that anymore. Uh -huh. So the basic question I ask is, are the insurance companies looking at different business models, a model that will enable you to extend coverage to people and also to stay alive and make a profit? Because as a corporation, that's your fiduciary responsibility. Uh -huh. Okay, complicated question. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll try and cover it point by point. Um, I don't think the insurance, I, no, I don't think the insurance companies are looking to change their business model. But the reality is that they don't make the, it's, it's not about making a profit off of somebody's illness. The job of the insurance company is to, is to help you hopefully control your health and to manage your health and welfare. So um, the issue isn't so much that they make money off of whether you're sick or not. The issue is that a good insurance company spends money to put programs in place to help you stay well long before you get sick. And I'll give you, um, I didn't really talk much about Emblem. I will in a little while, but I'll give you an example of one of our programs. We offer a free diabetes training program to all members. It's something that comes through the Center for Disease Control. And what happens is, if you're, uh, I think the test is ACL1, is of a certain, is, is, is over three, or three or over, that means you're at risk for getting type 1 diabetes. So we go by test score, and at some point somebody reaches out and says, what's your name? Diane. Somebody reaches out and says, excuse me, uh, Diane, this is your insurance company. Your doctor recommended for you to join this, this training program. It's a 17-week program. They explain it to you. And when you come to the class, they explain to you that because of the level is where it is, that we're offering a free program to help you watch what you eat and your lifestyle to prevent you from even getting to the point where you catch type 1 diabetes. So we're spending money up front. This is what a good insurance company should do, spending the money up front to help you put things in place so that you don't get to a point where one, you're sick because we're, we're, we're insurance companies lose money and incidentally the profit margin for insurance companies, people think, oh wow, they make a lot of money. Profit margin is 5%. That's not a lot of money. Profit margin on, on selling liquor is, is bigger than that. If you go buy a drink at a bar, the profit margin on on them pouring versus what you buy is more than that, way more than that. So the profit margin is very small. So how insurance companies actually make money is they figure out they get X dollars in premium to serve you. I don't have a board I can write. They get X dollars in premium to serve you. A certain amount of that is spent on administration, paying staff, et cetera, et cetera. And then the rest is spent on your medical care. So the only way for them to make money is to make sure that you aren't extremely sick, you don't rack up a lot of hospital bills, and the issue with the pre-existing conditions, it was that 
um, insurance companies wanted that in the past because you could sign up for my company today and then let's say you know that you have cancer and I don't know and then once you come I pay all of the cost of your treatment. I'm That's not saying, why I'm saying mm -hmm. the business model is defective period okay because of the pre that is the perfect point and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak let's, anymore. Let's, let's talk afterwards because um, I don't know that I necessarily agree. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but then you'd have to show me a different a different model. But we can talk about that afterwards. Yes, yes. sir. Um, one of the things um, about how the insurance companies are doing it now, they have preventive care, and basically that's uh, HIV, um, pregnancy. They have a whole bunch of testing that previously you had to pay for. Now these are the staple for all companies, insurance companies. So. They are changing the model, but what everybody has to understand, since this is so new, a lot of people have doubts. But when you can go to the point where people who did not have coverage and now have coverage and are entitled to 10 preventive coverage um, care um, visits. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good thing, but the thing <coughs> is, I think it's more about information that people have to understand that you are entitled to these insurances no matter what company you go to. And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm proud that we're having this because the more information you have, the more you can be informed. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I have a question and a request. I'm say to a run day and very friendly with Marcia McCall. Okay. Me the emails. Mm -hmm. And I'm, my question simply is, once you explain the emblem plan, mm -hmm. how does that differ from a Health First, Health Plus affinity and okay. how many people in New York State are insured by you in comparison to the others? Gotcha. And the other thing is with the portfolio of physicians that you have, who will accept an emblem and who will not accept an emblem? I'm not okay. sure, but I have 29 doctors in my family. I'm always looked at. Okay. I don't have any diabetes, or acid reflux, or anything like that. Okay. I'd like to know more about that. The other thing is, just before you walked into the room, mm -hmm. there was an interesting question that was asked. Okay. And the answer was never, was about to be delivered, but it wasn't. I want to hear more about the New York State database for the healthcare. And Mark, you were about to say something that you probably forgot. Well, we'll come back to it. <laughs> and then I know you were talking about that. Okay, I, I think I'm going to answer all of your questions when I talk about emblems. So give me a second to, to answer a few more questions. I'll do that then if I don't ask me again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just remember the next deadline. Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens. Um, if you apply under the Affordable Care Act, as long as your application is in by December 22nd, your coverage starts January 1. Anything after that is February 1, up through, I'm going to say, either, either January 15th or January 22nd. If they extend the deadline like they did for December, it will be the 22nd of, of, of January 4, February 1, and so on. But the the um, the end of open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act is March 31st. So if you live in New York and you're eligible to apply and you have it by March 31st, then you're 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 in, you're in trouble unless they extend it or or unless you wait until the next year. And so the ultimate deadline is March. Well, it depends on how you look at it. If I don't have health coverage today, and I know I can apply and get health coverage, I'm going to apply by December. 22nd so that I have coverage effective January 1. Waiting until March 31st until the last minute doesn't really help you because if you need to see a doctor between January 1 and March 31st then you have no coverage. No, I'm not saying that. I, yeah. wait. I just want, I just want to mm -hmm. No, I just want to clarify that. But you're right. The, 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 the last date that you can apply is the 31st of March. But again, with all of the issues that the state has had with their website, um, I wouldn't wait until the last few days to apply. I have all of my people, the, the enrollment happens on, um, on the state website, and there have been lots of issues. I did an event for UFT Thursday night. I had people that worked until 12 midnight on Thursday trying to insure people from the UFT. We had computers. I have some enrollment trucks. I had three trucks out there working, and several times the state website crashed which means that whatever I'm working on 
is either lost or, or I can't enroll that person for that evening. So the last thing you want is to wait until the last minute and possibly have a problem where you can't enroll. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, <clears throat> yes, I remember you very well. And then secondly, unfortunately I have to go because we have a workshop that we're doing across town. Okay. But one of the things that I read briefly in this manual is in terms of the income limitations. Okay. Um, and not that I make a whole lot of money, but I seem to get blocked out of a lot of opportunities and certainly as it relates to this. That okay. This, I don't know for sure and I will find out um, whether or not this affordable care act serves me. But there are lots of people who we, and certainly I think a number of, a number of our members could benefit from um, the Hall Marks Alliance is a service organization for artists working in all disciplines, um, could benefit from us. So I just wanted to say that. And the other thing, is there any other way to register other than through the website? Can you, can you do it on, on the phone or is, are there um, any <coughs> things that will help facilitate the process? Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right I'm going to cover some of this when I talk about the act, but the, the, okay. the, the, the easy answer to your question is the main way of applying is through the website. And the reason is they use third party databases to verify your income so that they can determine how much you have to pay or whether you have to pay a premium. Now, you can apply by mail, but I discourage people, and let me tell you why. The state says you can apply by mail. I've never seen an application. <laughs> so if I don't have an application, how do I get you to fill one out? Then once you fill out that application, think of what has to happen. It goes in the mail. Let's say it takes two or three days to get to the state. Then it takes a day or so for somebody to actually open it and read it. And then they still have to do the income determination for you. I'm not sure how they do that on a paper app. So I tell people, don't apply by paper. It doesn't make sense. Don't even ask me about applying by paper because I don't know how to tell you to do that. Now, the state does have uh, phone banks where they say people can call. This is my experience of my people last night. We tried to help several people apply around 7 o'clock last night. The state, um, the 877 number is is closed as of 8 p.m. and the website experiences the most traffic after 8 p.m. so go figure that doesn't make sense does it but whatever um, we had several people on hold for 45 minutes or so and ultimately didn't get help so um, you can apply on your own I would say if you don't have anyone to help you try applying on the web on your own I have several people who do this who are all over the city I have people that are stationary in the Bronx. I've, I told people from the UFT the other night who couldn't, some of them we couldn't help because they didn't have all the documents they needed. Not because we didn't say what they needed, but because the UFT didn't tell them what documents they needed. But we didn't get into a big thing. I said, I can't help you, but, well, do I have to come back here? No. Call me. Here's my card. Call me. I'll send somebody to your house and help you apply. It's really not an issue for me. I'll do what I have to do to help you, but you have to have all your right documents. So um, there are lots of other organizations that operate as what they call navigators that help people. CHN is one of them. Uh, Emblem is one of them. All of my people are certified uh, as uh, what they call certified application counselors. So there are lots of places you can go. If you have a question that or have somebody that needs help that can't get an answer or what have you, you can easily you can easily email me. You have my email address, and I'll, and I'll gladly respond. And either tell them where they can go, or have somebody call them to help them. Yes, sir. And also, um, I'm actually uh, I'm with Emblem. I'm able to give insurance for Emblem, but I'm also with United Healthcare. I'm with. Um, so you're a broker. I'm a broker. So okay, I'm able cool. To offer it, and what we do as well, we're a third party. So we sit down with you. We explain it. We ask what your needs are because a lot of people. Needs are different. Then we choose a plan that's best for you. It might be Amber, it might be uh, United Healthcare. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right, right here. Yeah. Right downstairs. Because what happens, we, all of us, we work, we work together, and our main concern every time of aspirations is knowing you know what you're being enrolled in. Because a lot of people now, they're misinformed about the deadlines and they're rusty. Because with the Medicare, today is the last day for Medicare. You have to have it in. And a lot of these senior citizens are being pressured to sign up. 
because they feel like they're not going to have the coverage. And what happens, you have to make sure you work with a reputable company who's credible and works for you. So at the end, of, you know, we, we'll all talk because this is something that we have to be able to be out here for people to see and people to understand. Because you, if you talk to somebody, they're trying to sign you up real fast, and they're not telling you what you're entitled to, second guess it. Second guess it. Because this is very important with everything that's being offered that's new is breaking the trend. So a lot of people are going to try to push their next So you can come Yeah. I um right here on the on the first floor, if you if you see the, the, the emblem side downstairs on the first floor, you can go right in the first floor there and they'll gladly get somebody to give you a hand. You're welcome. And also on the website, kind of good, good for yourself. Okay. Why is your initiative? Website. Yeah. Quick question. Are you going to talk about the, the details on the specifics of each plan? No, not 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 each of the plans. I'll talk Anyways. about the I'll talk I'll talk about the act itself. I'll talk a little bit about the metal levels. Right. Yeah. I and will. then are you going to talk about eligibility and uh, yes. the detail? Okay. okay. So let me tell you a little bit about Emblem Health. Uh, we are a health and wellness company. A lot of people think that we're just an insurance company, but we're a health and wellness company that also provides people with insurance. Why is that important? Because a large part of what we do has to do with helping people maintain a healthy lifestyle. And every insurance company doesn't do that. For a lot of companies, it's about give me the premium, uh, let me tell you where you need to go, you choose a doctor, and the rest is up to you. Uh, we are approximately 7,500 employees serving over a million people. Uh, to answer your question, uh, say who it was, right? C2. Say two, sorry. Um, we, in, in New York, I think we're a little over half a million members in New York. And that's across, um, we do every product out there. We do Medicaid, we do Medicare, we do Child Health Plus. We have a large amount of commercial business. We're the largest insurer of city and state personnel in, in, in New York, period. So most of the police, most of the firemen, most of the school teachers, et cetera, most of them are Emblem members. They're either a member because they were a HIP member before, or they were a GHI member, because Emblem's a 2006 merger, those two companies, HIP and GHI. So we have 75 years in the insurance business here in, um, here in New York. Um, we also offer insurance through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, what is the Affordable Care Act? It's also, any, any of you watch Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> and if you see that Jimmy Kimmel did a skit where he was out interviewing people, he says, uh, you know, what do you think about the Affordable Care Act? And people are like, oh, it's good, it's great, it's great. And he says, okay, so what do you think about Obamacare? They're like, oh, no, it's, it's bad. It's bad for the country. <laughs> and then at the end, he says, do you know that these two things are the same thing? And they all look very stupid. And then on his show, he had all those people he interviewed, and he points at them and he goes, that's my stupid section. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's on the internet. If you, if you Google uh, Jimmy Kimmel Obamacare. Anyway, um, the Affordable Care Act. It's also called Obamacare. In New York, the, the website itself, the machine that you use to select a plan is called the Marketplace or the Healthcare Exchange. So what is it? It's a new act in law that is basically designed to give people affordable health insurance. Let's face it. If you are not connected to a big company, if you uh, don't have a large employer, if you are not independently wealthy as an individual, it is very difficult to get insurance um, in the United States period. In New York, there's a program called Healthy New York. Over the years, even that has gotten expensive for individuals. So uh, the Affordable Care Act basically gives all of the states in the United States the ability to, uh, or mandates them to open a exchange a marketplace for people to be able to obtain health insurance. What does that mean for New York? Well, New York volunteered, rather than go under the government's exchange, New York volunteered to do their own. And it's a good thing that we did. If you listen to the news over the last couple of weeks, the federal website has been under fire every day. Every morning I turn on the news, something new comes up. Uh, they've had a lot of issues. The site just plain doesn't work. New York site, I'm happy to say it does work. There are issues with it from time to time, but I have people that are doing enrollments every day on New York State site if 
it has not crashed or something or something like that. And when it's down, it's usually never down more than a few hours, sometimes, sometimes a good portion of a day. Um, <clears throat> so what are the changes? The changes are, um, let's see if I can run through them quickly. Um, if you were to apply for Medicaid here in New York, you'd have to be at 100% of the federal poverty level. So that basically means that you're uh, based on whether you're single or not, whether you're married or not, how many children you have or not. There's a scale that says if you make under X dollars for a single person, uh, I'm guessing it was something like $15,000, $16,000. Um, and that's for 2013. That's 100% of the federal poverty level. With the Affordable Care Act, as of January, that level goes up to 138%. So the people that work for me are out here in the street seeing that there are several people that they could not get coverage during the year that they're going back to and saying, hey, guess what? You're actually within the income limits now. Let's apply for January. And getting Medicaid means that the person has no co-payments, no premiums, et cetera. The majority of the care that they need is covered. That is significant because there are a lot of people out here who work, work every day, hardworking people, not lazy people, serious people who can't get health insurance because their job doesn't offer it to them. And the lady who works at the dry cleaners that I go to, I sent her to one of my staff. I come back to see her. And she says, they couldn't do anything for me. I make too much money. I said, I'm really sorry, but things are going to change. Hopefully now we're going to be able to insure her. Um, <clears throat> if you make under 400% of the federal poverty level and you pay taxes, if you're married and make under 400%, you have to file jointly with your spouse. You're eligible for tax credits. Tax credits basically based on the fact that you pay taxes, you can use to either get a lump sum back at the end of the year or apply those tax credits towards your monthly premium, premiums and lower your premiums. They also offer cost sharing subsidies where the state uh, offers money to you to reduce what you're paying so that you don't pay as much. I'll give you an example, um, and this is a true story. We, we have um, some 25-foot enrollment trucks that we put out in the neighborhoods that we're able to enroll six or seven people at a time because we have computers and stuff on them. They're very big, they're very visible, visible so I have them in all the neighborhoods. The lady's on the truck in the Bronx, and um, she figures out that she makes too much money to qualify for Medicaid. Uh, based on the salary she makes, she has to pay $385 a month. But as, as my uh, staff person, Giselle, applied for her, she checked off the box and said uh, the person wanted to apply for advanced premium tax credits. So she went from $385 down to $200 a month. After the cost, sh the cost uh, sharing subsidies, she went down to $67 a month. A single person. Who do you know pays $67 a month for health insurance? Besides that person, I don't know anybody. <clears throat> um, so there are a lot of different things that go into play when you apply. You can use the state site to uh, put in your income, dependents, et cetera, and estimate how much your premium is going to be. You've got to do the application to figure out what your tax credits are going to be. Because you do an application doesn't mean that you have to select a plan. It doesn't mean that you have to choose a plan or anything like that. You can do an application. And then at the end of it, say, I don't want to select a plan right now. I'm going to come back to it. And they will pend your application for 60 days. No, nine, like I'm that, sorry, 90 days. Seems like that would be extremely skilled to deal and, and navigate through all of the options to get the best the way that you explain it. No. I, it's okay. I'm just saying you, you, that. You, you don't. Know, I'll tell you what you have to have, though. And, and this is the thing. This is part of our culture as New Yorkers. We rush for everything. Everything is text. Everything is instant gratification. Everything is, oh, I got to stand on line to get it? No, I don't want it. I have to wait on hold. I've been on hold three minutes. No, I have to hang up. Seriously. So, but what you have to do is you have to be patient. You have to read and take your time. So I have several staff members who've done applications and gotten stuck. And they're like, I don't know what to put in here. What's the problem? I said, did you read what it says? Yo, I read it. I read it. Really? It says no letters in the number that you, this is a true story. No letters. If you, if you, if you 
are patient and you read what it says, you can get through it. It may not, you may not get through it in a half an hour. It may take you an hour. It may take you a little more, but you can do it. And the, the, the benefit of all of that reading and taking your time, if you can go from $385 a month to $67 a month for health coverage, I think it's well worth an hour and a half. It's well worth a half day of your time if it takes you that long to, to, to apply. Um, so uh, there are a number of health plans. Yes, sir. Simple question. Sure. Uh, before you came in, I mentioned the statistic that the average artist makes $21,000 a year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> would he or she be eligible, or would they fall into a different category? Um, it just be Medicare for them. Um, $21,000 if they're single, they're above the limit for Medicaid, but they do qualify for tax credits. Um, so I would say that if, I, I would say don't be discouraged, apply and, and see what the system says. Uh, if, they have, if they have children, then uh, they could qualify for Medicaid depending on how many dependents that they have. Yeah. Yes, sir. You, you made an actually when I came back, you were, you were giving an example that was going to be a question I was going to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of uh, you know, filing and doing taxes and, and filing jointly you know, as a married couple. Right. Um, so let's say a, a couple, one, you know, one, the husband or the wife is on the other's insurance. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is it worth it to kind of see what the Affordable Care Act can do? Because maybe that is that, that could lower Excellent a, question. A premium. Excellent question. I'll tell you. <clears throat> It's definitely worth it. We have a, another case, couple, um, they had really good insurance. They were paying $1,500 a month. The husband does all of the research on the internet, calls us and says, um, hey, uh, I, wanna, I wanna apply for your, your insurance. He says, I've done the research, I've looked at what you offer compared to what my company offers me. He says, I figured out that I want to know how much your platinum coverage is, because that, that is exactly the same as what I'm getting. Did all the math, put him and his wife in, did an application, $550 a month coverage for both of them under the exchange. And they were not, they made too much money to get tax credits or anything like that. So that is what they are getting. So they've gone, got the same coverage, different plan, at a, almost a little, a little more than a third of what they were paying. Oh my God. Big deal, <clears throat> big deal, big deal. So yes, it is worth it. Yes, sir. And also, what's important about that too, if they ever leave their job, they still have the medical coverage. True. What a lot of people don't realize is that with the state of the economy as jobs are going under, then you got to talk about COVID. COVID is is story. So the thing about the exchange, it puts you more in control of your destiny when it comes to your money. So that's that's an excellent example to the point where you have people who have coverage through their job, but sometimes they want to have their own coverage just in case they leave that job. Explain the exchange because you both mentioned the exchange. Okay. Explain so it. so um, so let's backtrack to, to 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 where I was. I think I was talking about how New York uh, New York volunteered to do their own exchange. The exchange is also known as the marketplace. And that is, um, that is the, the, the machine or the system that is set up for you to apply for insurance. It's basically just a website. It's a, a very complex website with an application that is designed for you to be able to put in all your information. So there's a couple of steps. You enter in your information. You enter your social security number, this, that, and the other thing. You hit enter. It verifies your identity. So before you go further, it determines you are who you say you are. And it's going to ask you a couple of questions after you do that. It's going to say, okay, well, which of these counties, it gives you a list, which of these counties have you lived in before? Which of these companies have you worked in before, et cetera? So it's information based on that data that is particular to you pulled off of third-party websites. Once they verify your identity, then you move forward. You enter in your income. You enter in uh, household information, how many people are in your household, what are their social security numbers, what your citizenship status is. If you are a U.S. citizen, all, all I really need to do in application, if you were born here in the U.S., is I need your, I need state ID so I know who you are. 
I need to know your social security number. I don't need the card. I just need you to know what that number is. Anyone in your household that's applying as well, I need their social security numbers. That's it. If you are uh, uh, a resident, if you have a resident card, I need you to bring the card because the number's from the card that I have to enter in order to complete your application. If you're what's called a naturalized citizen, which means that you weren't born here, but you became a citizen later, it doesn't matter that you already have a passport. I need the naturalization certificate because there are numbers on there that have to go into the system in order to process your application. So that's what I need. Really simple. People say, should I bring my tax returns? I don't need them, but you're able to enter deductions and inf information on your income. Sometimes it makes sense to bring them so that you make sure you enter all of the correct information so that you don't miss out on anything when it comes to tax credits, premiums, income, etc. Um, so the, the exchange is the engine that's used for you to apply. It's also called the marketplace. Uh, we say the Affordable Care Act. A lot of people are saying Obamacare. A lot of people think that uh, the two things are different, etc. Uh, but the true name is the Affordable Care Act or the ACA. <clears throat> so you go on the marketplace or you go on the exchange to fill out an application. Um, the system tells you at the end of the application, the system says you're eligible for Medicaid, you are eligible for tax credit. The system tells you everything as you go along. So as long as you're patient and as long as the site is working, um, you're okay. If you run into a problem, there's an 877 number that you call. You just call the state and say, hey, I'm doing my application. I have a problem. What do I do next? Yes, ma'am. So are you saying you're talking about it's open for enrollment? It's got, the, the enrollment is going to close in March? Enrollment closes March 31st. Is that forever? No. <clears throat> so enrollment closes in March for all people who are eligible now uh -huh. through the end of March. So if you're eligible, if you live in New York, you're eligible to get insurance, but you don't get it by March 31st, uh -huh. then it's going to be closed to you. Um, for new applicants, people who just move here, they can't deny it to people who just move here who didn't live here before. So if you're just moving in from out of state April 15th, you can apply. For people who are applying uh, as, as, as uh, Medicaid members, they can apply at almost any time because people go, people's income goes up and down. But for the average, the average person who is uninsured, not going to be a Medicaid recipient, etc., the deadline is March 31st, if you're living in New York right but now. But does, does, does it open up every year? Is it on an annual basis? The, or the, is plan, it... the plan is that it would open every year from October through March or okay. from October okay. through some other date determined by the state. The reason I ask that is, say, for example, people have coverage through jobs mm -hmm. and they lose it. They would just then have to apply. wait until the opening no. the following year because no. you stated they would have to go on COBRA. No, if you, if you have coverage through a job and you lose coverage and it's past March 31st, then you can apply. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that's what's considered a life-changing event. So you've had something that has this caused you to not have coverage, so you can apply. But if you didn't have coverage, one, were a New York, New York City, New York State resident between October 1 and March 31st, and you didn't apply, then chances are you're not going to be able to apply. It all depends on your circumstances. Okay, so <clears throat> you apply. The system comes back to you and says, uh, here is the coverage that you're eligible for. You get a choice of several different health plans. It tells you what the premium is, but each health plan offers you what's called a metal level, uh, four different metal levels rather. So there's bronze, there's silver, there's gold, and there's platinum. What does that mean? It's all calculated by actuarial values. So they tell you uh, each the metal le the metal level determines how much the plan pays for your coverage. So in bronze, the plan pays sixty percent of your coverage. You pay forty percent of your coverage. There are deductibles. There is uh, there are copayments. You um, and there's also a premium. So you basically decide between gold, uh, between bronze, silver, gold, platinum. You decide what you want to pay for your coverage and how much your out-of-pocket for your coverage is going to be. Uh, with, with silver, 
plant pays 70%, person pays 30%. With gold, it is 80-20, and with uh, platinum, it's 90-10. So I tell people, sometimes people say, well, what, what coverage is closest to mine? And I tell them, well, I don't know if I don't know what your coverage is. Because insurance companies offer all different, all different types of coverage. Uh, I, so I'll say to them, uh, how much are you paying as a copay? And if they tell me I'm not paying anything as a copayment, I tell them, look at the platinum plan. Because there are no copayments on the platinum plan. For example. Yes, ma'am. Are all of the doctors that we accept in, uh, if they accept MLEM, are they going to be accepting all levels, like from bronze to platinum? Excellent or question. Are they going to actually? Excellent question. Okay. Answer to that is. <clears throat> Uh, ba, 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 ba. Answer to that is for the for the exchange products, our network is smaller. So all of our doctors, if the doctor accepts, if the doctor accepts uh, patients under the Affordable Care Act, they accept all metal levels. They can't be in. A, they can't say I'm only going to accept platinum and not bronze. They're either in the network. So our, the network for that is called the Select Care Network. It is smaller, but there are a number of things that have changed. I should tell you all that for uh, for Upper Manhattan as a plan, Emblem has more providers than any other insurance company out there. When I say more, I'm talking at least a thousand more. Not like sometimes people say I have more and it's really two or three. We have at least a thousand providers more than any other plan out there in Upper Manhattan. Um, when it comes to select care, we just signed a contract with Presbyterian that's going to include Presbyte all Presbyterian facilities, Presbyterian doctors, and the Presbyterian IPA. What does that mean? That means that in Upper Manhattan, for instance, if you live in Washington Heights, I am the only plan that Presbyterian takes, that, that takes Presbyterian that is on the, on the New York State Healthcare Exchange. That is very significant because we've been after this contract with Presby for a while. Yes, sir? So what people have to do is so talk to your doctor. Ask your doctor, are you participating with this carrier? Because what happens if a doctor withdraws from that carrier, you can no longer go to that doctor with that, that, that coverage. So most importantly, talk to your doctor to find out in the upcoming year who's he going to deal with. Yes, ma'am. I did talk to my doctor, and she told me, oh, they told me a doctor that uh, they would take emblem as long as it's here, not GHI. But they didn't know if it was going to be margin because you're right now you have two different. Uh, it sounds to me like they don't know whether right. they're going to so be. That's what I'm you, asking them. you can actually go on our website. Our website has two tools on the emblem website. One okay. that, that that helps you figure out what your premium would be under the ACA, but the other. Is a search tool for your provider where you can search for your provider, and that will tell you because sometimes the providers don't know. Okay, but uh, is it gonna still be doing HIP and DHI, or is it gonna be just one? Well, we call us we 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 call ourselves one company, but what happens is certain portions of the business are considered HIP business, and some are considered GHI business. Most of the HMO business is under is under HIP, but you don't really. You as a consumer don't know that because your card says emblem on it. It doesn't really say emblem, but HMO, HIP, or what have you. So that's more of an internal thing for us. So you can't really, I wouldn't go by what the doctor says as far as that's concerned. I would look them up on the website, or I could have one of my people, uh, da, 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 da. the gentleman is usually working here today, uh, left early because I had him work at UFT last night, but I can find out for you okay. if you give me the doctor's name. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. How often can you change your plan if you pick platinum, but then you know, a few months you're like, oh, well, my plan I think you can, you can change. That's between you and the plan. I think that you can change metal levels anytime you want. But, I, but after, after the first, it's either 60 or 90 days, you can't switch plans. So let's say you joined Emblem and you're platinum and you want to change to bronze, you can do that. But you can't be in be an emblem six months and then say, I want to move to United Health Plan and change to bronze. But you can change metal levels at any time. We're not gonna our desire is to provide people coverage, it's not to lock you into a premium or anything like that, because your circumstances may change. Okay, so um, <clears throat>
So you get to the point where you build a household, you choose a plan. After you choose a plan, um, one of two things is going to happen. They give you a congratulations screen that says, congratulations, you joined this plan, you're at this metal level, this is how much your premium is, and then it says that you're, you don't, and you still haven't paid any money. You're, the insurance carrier is going to bill you. That's the it. Immediate coverage? Coverage starting January one if you apply by by December twenty by December twenty second. So um, here's the key thing: you have to keep up with your premiums. Uh, there's a grace period for premiums, uh, but what happens beyond that? I don't know. Uh, so I don't know what the plans do. I'm sure the plans aren't going to hold you forever if you haven't paid premium paid premiums in six months, but. This is what I tell people. They ask, well, how much time do I get? What difference does it make? It's a no-brainer. If you get coverage for $100 a month, $67 a month, do you really want to mess it up and not pay your bill? I mean, we're not talking about cell phones, right? Some of us pay our cell phone bill every month. Some of us wait till the second month because we know that we can get away with not paying it, with not paying it, but they catch up to you at the end of 60 days. But guess what? They also charge you a fee because it's a late fee. So are you paying less or are you paying more? You're not getting away with anything. Um, so you pay your premium. Uh, the good thing about this is you're treated just like everybody else. There's no distinction, as, there's no distinction uh, at least with us as a company, there's no distinction with, oh, you're, uh, you're Emblem Medicaid, you're Emblem this, you're Emblem that. You're an Emblem member, period. That is it. Uh, you choose your provider, you get your care. The type of care that you get is governed by the benefits that are under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you get hospitalization, emergency room, there's uh, uh, mental health substance abuse, there's well care, there's preventive care, there are, uh, there's obviously pharmacy and this and that and the other thing. Different plans have different drugs that they cover. So. The, some of them, most of them use generics, but they all have a provision for brand name drugs. But the pharmacy benefit, when you look at it and compare them side to side with one plan versus the other, they have ways, uh, ways that they can tweak their plans and make the pharmacy plans slightly more beneficial to some people than others. So that's something that's important for you to know. <clears throat> but you will see all of that and get to look at all of that information when doing the application on the marketplace. Did I answer all your questions? Because you asked me quite a few things. Um, we talked about providers. We talked right. about network. The, the levels. You know, the level set for the levels. Oh, so so if so so a provider. That's our select care network. So so Presbyterian. Let's take Presbyterian. They're part of our select care network. So if you go to them as an Affordable Care Act member, they accept whatever level you're in because they're contracted for that business, not by metal level. So if you're bronze, they're going to take you. If you're silver, they're going to take you. If they're platinum, they're going to take you, period. But the same doctor, doctor has to accept all levels? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, okay. yes. They can't pick and choose like that. Okay. They cannot. Okay. So um, let's say you apply. Let's say you make, uh, I don't know, $130,000 a year, and you apply with us. You make too much money to qualify for Medicaid. So what happens is... Um, you uh, apply through um, what we call a qualified health plan. What that basically means is you pay your premium for your coverage with the plan that you select. What is your premium going to be? It differs based on the plan. Uh, Emblem is one of the three, one of the three least expensive plans out there. So our our premium model was was one of the lowest compared I think they use you something they use they use data data and benefits from an Oxford plan to set all of this up but when all was said and done we're one of the 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 three least expensive plans out there um, a lot of the other plans uh, someone asked me earlier how do we differ compared to compared to other health plans out there well um, one, we do all lines of business. So Health First is a uh, government services plan that does Medicare and Medicaid, mostly Family Health Plus. We do every line of business out there. 
uh, we have more members than most of them. We have more providers than most of them. Emblem Health, I'm happy to say this year is the only plan in New York that is a four-star Medicare plan. What that means is the, the feds rank you by star. Every other plan in New York is either two or three stars. We're the only four-star Medicare plan here in New York. Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, we, 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 work, we work very hard to, and again, remember what I said in the beginning, we consider ourselves a health and wellness company. So most of the programs, are, we have a lot of staff that are dedicated just to helping people stay well. Um, whether, we, whether we offer uh, discounts to gyms, uh, whether we offer here, if you come here to neighborhood care, uh, depending on where you come, this room or the next room there, we offer classes. You don't pay for them. It doesn't matter whether you're an Emblem member or not. You can come here and take Zumba, Tai Chi, uh, what have you, come for nutrition classes. We do uh, cell phone literacy for seniors. So we have quite a bit of things that we spend money on just to help people to provide services to people, whether they're members or not, because it's, it's important. It's important to stay healthy. Isn't that part of changing the model, though? It is. Well, we'd like to think that we invented the model. This, this neighborhood care here, this space that you're in now, um, this space here you can actually use for free. If you have a, a group or an event, a book club, something that you want to do and you want to host here, there's just one person that you email, uh, Krista Hill, one of the ladies is out here. You, you, you can literally email somebody and say, can I use the room? And if it's open, it's not, a, it's not an issue. There's not a charge to to use this room if you're if you're somebody who um, who is somehow affiliated with us or just lives in Harlem or or, or, or lives or, or works in Harlem. Um, there's a downstairs here also. If you come in here in neighborhood so that there 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 are two things that have changed with, with Emblem lately is we are we've taken our community involvement from this level and have taken it to here to the extent that this neighborhood care, this space that you're in right now, from here to the two windows over, hey, um, and down on the first floor, is dedicated to members. We have, uh, you see the height, weight, and uh, body mass index uh, calculator over there. You see the blood pressure cuffs, they're here and downstairs. You see the flat screen monitors. Uh, you can come in and use the flat screen monitors or an iPad to do research on healthcare. They don't check you at the door and say you're an Emblem member. You come in, you say you have an issue, something, a problem, you need a service, you're an Emblem member, you want to change your PCP. Um, you lost your Medicare, your Medicare card and you want another one. You want to know about a class on something. Somebody will greet you, will help you, and whether it's something that we provide or not, that's what the staff down there are for very accommodating. If you need health insurance, they will walk you to the back on the first floor and introduce you. They don't sit, say, go down there and talk to Joshua two doors down. They physically walk you down, introduce you to Joshua, hand you off to him, tell him what you need, and that person works with you to see if they can help you. So that is the, 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 the type of service that we look to provide in the community. If you look at our logo underneath the logo, it says Emblem Health, what care feels like. So we're out working. I tell my staff all the time, when you interact with somebody, I want them to walk away knowing what care feels like based on their interaction with you. <clears throat> we do events. Uh, I mentioned an event at CHN in the Bronx. We did um, uh, something with the Apollo, a Healthy Soul uh, Health Festival in the back right here on 126th Street during the summer. Um, we've done a couple of things with the Apollo. We've done the... Uh, Dominican uh, Parade in the Bronx. Um, we've done, uh, you'll see us everywhere in the community. If you don't see a billboard or a bus shelter or an ad on the bus or one of my trucks, you will see something in, um, in those neighborhoods. Because our thing is that, you know, we, we're, our staff are part of the community. We're part of the communities. We live in the communities and we work in the communities. Yes, ma'am. I am, based on my independent um, research, I am happy to say that um, in most of the searches, Emblem Health has come up mm -hmm. as a favorable plan for me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. However, I still make more. I'm, I'm outside of the income guidelines for Medicaid and Medicare. I make too much money. For well, that. I can look at you now and tell you you're too young for Medicare. Medicare is for people that are 65 and older and retired. So, okay, so I'll I'm, I'm that. glad. Okay, I'm glad right. that, you, I'm glad that, you, right. I'm glad that, that. you don't qualify for that. But most of the plans, it's still. I, I'm looking at really just taking the penalty because it's still all the plans that I've looked at are still beyond my needs. I wouldn't be able to. Okay. Maintain the premium. Payments. Did you? Did you? How are you looking? Did you fill out an application online? I looked. I did the um, the calculator. Well, here's what the calculator doesn't okay. give you. The calculator doesn't tell you if you qualify for tax okay. credits and what they are. Okay. The calculator doesn't tell you if you qualify for cost the the, the, the cost sharing the cost sharing subsidies. So, okay. um, my recommendation to you is either do the application online. Because there's no commitment. At the end of the application, you don't have to buy anything, choose anything. You can pin your application at the end. Well, come here. You live in Harlem? I live in Washington Heights. Okay. Um, we have an office. i got people that work out of uh, the Advantage Care Physicians Office on 185th and Broadway. Okay. Uh, if you're close to there. Uh, I, my enrollment truck, on Friday, my enrollment truck was on Broadway and 181st. I'll give you my card <laughs> at, at, at the end of this, and you can... You can basically call me or email me any day and say, uh, where can I go see somebody? This is where I am. Let somebody, it'll take you a half an hour to 45 minutes, let somebody run through the application with you and tell you if you're able to get any of those things. They'll ask you some questions before you even see them. You know, do you file taxes? Are you married? If you're married, do you file jointly? This and that and the other thing. But See if you qualify for them, because I gave an example earlier of a, of a, a single woman who was going to pay three hundred and eighty-five dollars a month. The, the 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 advanced premium tax credits bumped her down to two hundred, and the cost sharing bumped her down to sixty-seven dollars a month. This is an actual; it's not a made-up example. This is an actual person that I encountered on one of my enrollment trucks. So, I mean, it's it's possible for you to be. Whatever the, the actual number was that the calculator gave you, it's possible that you could reduce that significantly. And are they looking at, are they also looking at net in terms of income? Um, I think they're looking at net, but uh, most of that is done through the internet. Okay. The main thing is that, that box, those two boxes get checked that you ask, that you say you want to apply for advanced premium tax credit and the cost sharing subsidies. Okay. As long as you check those during the application process, you're, you're golden. At the, at, the, at the end of the application, it will tell you what it's reduced to. And this should be the AC, ACA um, site? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was late. Not a problem. No you. worries, I was late myself. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, where exactly will I find uh, if my doctor would take Emblem? Like, um, is there a specific? You can go to the emblemhealth.com site, okay. and uh, there's there's a tab on there for the Affordable Care Act or the Marketplace, and there should be a tool. There should be a tool. I don't remember the exact URL right this second, but I know it's on the site because I've seen it. Okay. And the other question is, for self-employed, there are, I mean, the website asks for the income for 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, if my income is going to be different, uh, can I input that information? Well, put put what you put what you know your income for 2012 to be. If you don't have it right there off the top no, of your I head, have it. Doesn't, okay. I mean, but 2014 is going to be a different story. It's so going to ask you. The site is going to ask you. The site is going to say for 2014 is your income the same okay. or is it more? And then you just indicate what the what the income is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Two important things. Um, if for some reason you haven't filed taxes, you can still apply. Uh, sometimes they ask you for an affidavit of income or what have you, but you can still apply. Um, here's something that nobody asks. Children. Children that are here that are undocumented, as long as they are under 19 years of age, they can apply and they will get Child Health Plus coverage. They will be... Um, the coverage will be determined based on the parent's income. <coughs> Um, they have to be under 19. They do not have to have a social security number because in many cases they will not. Adults over the age of 19, 
who are undocumented are unable to get insurance through the Affordable Care Act at this time. That's very important to mention because uh, there are a lot of folks everywhere you go that are undocumented and the numbers of them are asking me and I, and I have to tell them, unfortunately, I don't make up the rules. Um, and that's, that's not something that's possible at this time. So if they're not eligible and they don't apply, because someone asked one of my staff this yesterday, do they get a penalty? No, because you're not eligible. The only people that are penalized are people that are eligible and haven't applied. Right? So if you're eligible, you say you're thinking about taking the penalty, I urge you don't, don't think about taking a penalty until you've done an application to see how much it's going to cost. Um, if you're eligible and you don't apply, then you could be charged a penalty. That's what they're saying right now. So that's the information I'm giving you. They, how are they charging the penalty? Is it every month, or is it whenever you need the coverage and you go to the doctor and then you don't have? I think it's just one flat it's fee, but it goes it, it goes up it's, it goes up every year. So the first year it's ninety five dollars. The next year something ridiculous like three hundred dollars. It just it just Double goes up, up, up. up. So the whole idea is just to discourage people from even thinking about. It. But here's the deal: a lot of people say, "Oh, ninety five dollars, I just won't pay it." But think about it. Okay, so you don't pay it. What if something happens, mm. right? You can't get primary care by not by, by doing that. You can go to the emergency room. You'll get billed for an emergency room visit, but you still don't have coverage. So it's like, why risk paying a penalty? I mean, if, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. That's one thing. I'm not saying apply for coverage you can't afford, but don't take a risk and not apply because anything can happen. Anything could happen, and I mean, this is the this is the first time I never thought in my lifetime that we'd reach a point in the states where people could really get affordable health coverage. I've always been fairly fortunate in that I get insurance through whoever I work for. The one time that I had to pay for it myself, that was the people asked me, "How do you like working for yourself?" I love everything about it except having to pay for health insurance <laughs> out of pocket because it's quite a few hundred dollars a month and it hurts. What are you gonna do? Are you over any plans that include dental? Uh, dental. Our plans don't include dental. You can get dental, but you have to pay a little bit extra for dental. And that's, and that's, that's again, is all on the site also. But none of our it's plans are inclusive of dental. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, but it's on the site. <coughs> yes. The marketplace yes. 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 Okay. I also need to uh, Yeah. Did you give me a URL? EmblemHealth.com. Okay. Emblemhealth.com? Yes. Are you going to talk about the details of the plans, like, you know, copays and uh, for each level? Mm, no, not unless you need me to. <laughs> not unless you need they, they, they're, 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 they're really all very simple. The, the, the copays vary by, by plan. Um, the main thing, I think, the main thing you need to know is bronze 60-40. Right. Uh, silver 70-30. The copays are going to differ by plan. So you do an application that says, okay, here are the plans you're eligible for. You, you check off uh, bronze. It'll tell you what bronze plan. You check off silver. It'll tell you what silver plans, and it gives and it gives you all of that. The copays are going to vary slightly from plan to plan. Uh, is that a function of your, your income? You make The more money you make, the more no. copays are the copays are the same. So in a gold plan, um, the copays are all going to be the same for that particular company. Uh, that that particular company still pays sixty percent of your bills, and you pay forty percent, et cetera. So, so no, it's not a function of your income. Your premium. The only thing that's reflective of your income is your premium. So, the amount you pay a month is determined based on your income. Yes. So we. This is the last question. So we have two minutes left, believe it or not. Okay. Really? Yeah. Wow. Deductibles. Uh, and you talk about deductibles. Uh, how is it going to work? Uh, I know that, oh, depending on the level, uh, the deductible is different. Uh, for, let's say you go to a doctor, you have a deductible of uh, $600. Mm -hmm. You go to a doctor, and you have to pay the full amount, you, until the $600, and then... Right. You, 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 could, you pay out of, depending on the, and, and the deductible varies on the, on the service. Sure. Um, right. 
it would, if your deductible was six hundred dollars, right. you pay, and once you pay the six hundred dollars, then the company, then for the next bill that you get, let's say it's a hundred dollars, and you're in the bronze plan, the company pays sixty dollars of that bill, and you pay forty dollars of that right. bill. Now, let's say, you know, for those $600 deductible visits, let's say the first visit is, I know this is important. One more question. The first visit is uh, $200 for the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, is that full $200 going to be applied to the deductible? Yes. Because before it used to be that they only applied like 75 they would only apply what is uh, no the, the full the full uh, the full the full rate. amount the, the full, full amount, amount no it should be the full amount that goes to it because okay. the deductible is based on what you pay so they right. can't limit they can't limit the amount it has to be if it's up to six hundred dollars once you've exhausted six hundred dollars then the health plan starts paying their amount. so basically the logic is the premium let's say a yearly is two thousand let's say and you have a six hundred deductible mm -hmm. so basically you're paying twenty six hundred for the year Okay. Right? Um, I mean, if, if, if before you start getting the coverage, you have to pay the 600 It's like paying. Okay. Is it? Okay. I'm trying to. The deductible pay. minus the annual. So okay. If your right. Deductible, if your annual is $2,000. Yes, that's correct. And your deductible is $600, then you deduct $600 from $2,000 is $14,000. Uh, because you have to pay, you have, no, you have to pay the deductible. Once you pay the deductible. Right. So it's plus, but right. not minus. Right? right. You're right. Okay. Yeah, she's right. Okay. Because she pays the premium, but right. she also still has to pay the deductible. Mm -hmm. So if all her premium pay payments come out to fourteen hundred and then she has a six hundred dollar deductible that she's paid two thousand for the year, assuming that you pay out the full six hundred dollars. Yes. That I use the yeah. services. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Right. Yes, right. That's correct. Right. That's correct. Okay. So I'm just, in, in terms of figuring out which plan, you have mm -hmm. to figure out that. Understood. Because the platinum doesn't have any deductible, and it's right. like $1,000 more, but right. then if you have deductible on the other one. That's the advantage of working with a navigator or working with somebody because they will run through all of those things with you and run through some of those scenarios. My people will not tell you what plan to choose, but they'll help you figure out what metal level or what have you. The plan choice is really your choice. I'm going to have to step in because we promised we'd be finished at four. Yep. Hey. Thank you all for your time. And what we're going to do, you can go to Harlem World Mag. We're going to have a radio podcast uh, with Malik, and we'll answer more of your questions. You can email us by uh, either emailing him, Malik, or sending an email to us, and we'll ask him the same questions or other questions on the website. And do our, yes. during our podcast. <laughs> yes. And if any of you missed uh, the conversation, uh, we have uh, the conversation videotaped, and we'll put it on the site uh, this coming week. So thank you all for being here on your Saturday. We have more radio shows coming up. Also on uh, on rhythmradio.com, we're going to bring in about about the Affordable Health Care Act and emblems and how to navigate the process. Please, please make sure you sign the sign-in sheet. Uh, that's a rule of our, our our host, and I don't want to get in trouble oh, for okay. that. Oh, there, oh, there's so, a few of them because I see one there too. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yes, ma'am. Ultimately, we could go downstairs. Yeah. Right next to the here. Yeah. Draw it. Yeah.